Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Keith Patterson. I'm the director of the Teaching with Primary Sources Western Region. Um, we are a grant project from the Library of Congress, and we're based out of Met the Metropolitan State University in Denver. Along with me is my colleague, Kyle. Hey, how's it going? My name is Kyle Claybaugh, the teaching, uh, the sorry, senior project manager for the TPS Western Region. Um, and then I teach in the journalism department um, for MSU Denver. And uh, welcome again to uh, TLD 2022, um, creating a learning oasis. Um, we're really excited to be joining you to or having you joining us today and having the opportunity to talk to a little bit more about um, some strategies on how to get you started with the Library of Congress. Um, Kyle and I have been working with the Library of Congress Teaching with Primary Sources grant here for many years and um, find one of the challenges that people run across to, uh, with uh, the Library of Congress, which is such a, a vast resource, is that sometimes it's a little hard to know where to start um, with the millions of things that are available. Sometimes you need a little bit of a guided tour on uh, where to get started in those collections online at LLC.gov. And so today's the day that we're gonna kind of give you a little bit of a coaching session on that and hopefully uh, give you a couple of on-roads to, to start your research. Um, just to start, if you're not familiar, the Library of Congress um, is located in Washington, DC, right across the, from the Capitol. Um, that's the Jefferson Building, which is one of their buildings. They have many buildings in DC. Um, they act as the, li the actual library of Congress, or they're the, the library that Congress uses to gather information. That's their primary mission. They're also kind of de facto America's library. Um, and with that mission, they've really um, wanted to reach every American um, in the country um, with the resources of the Library of Congress. And um, so part of that mission is the work that we do with the Teaching with Primary Sources Program. We're a grant from the Library of Congress, like I said, at Metropolitan State Uni University of Denver. And um, our part of that work is to really help spread the word with educators um, throughout the country and in our region. We are one of three regional centers, which we'll talk about later. Um, and that gives us some additional options to kind of get you involved. Um, there's two big missions from the Library of Congress, Teacher with Primary Sources Program. Um, one is really just to raise awareness of the resources that are available at loc.gov. There's over 60 million things that are digitized on their website. And um, so that's one thing. And so we're kind of fulfilling a little bit of that mission today by showing you how to get started with um, searching and working with the resources there. The other really is just the effective use of those resources in the, in the educational settings and classrooms. And so um, throughout the week, we're gonna have plenty of that as well. So, and if you have any questions, you're free to get a hold of us. Um, on your screen now is Dr. Carla Hayden. She is the 14th Librarian of Congress. Um, and she's the one who's really come up with this mission and wanted to reach everyone in the country with the resources at the Library of Congress. Um, we always like to bring her up because um, she uh, is, has got this really great mission for the library. And so it's just good to put a, a, a face to the, to the title of the, that you think of the library into Congress, but um, that's who our, who our big boss at the Library of Congress is. Um, just as a general overview, again, if you're not too familiar with the Library of Congress, um, it really has been around since the beginning of our country, um, being founded about 1800, and it originally um, was a was in housed in the capital. As many of you probably know, in the War of 1812, the British burned down the capital along with the original Library of Congress. Um, so they rebuilt it in 1815, um, and largely they did that through the purchase of about 6,500 books from Thomas Jefferson. And those books are still housed in the Jefferson Building in Washington, D.C. today, and you can actually see them in a rotunda. Um, in an exhibit. So you can actually see um, the sorts of books that he sold to Congress that kind of started the collection and started the tradition of, of gathering a vast um, amount of information across all sorts of subject areas to make sure that Congress would have the information needed to make um, wise and good congressional decisions. Um, today, the, the collections at the Library of Congress are well over 170 million physical items. Um, and among those, as you see, there's over 60 million that have been digitized, and that's increasing every day. Um, a lot of people think libraries are books, um, but the Library of Congress actually collects any sort of media. You can see a long list of things that kind of runs the gamut, including, as we think, um, 21st century things like audio and visual and 3D objects that have been scanned. Um, all those things are in those collections at the Library of Congress, and many of those are available online to you as American citizens, or even those who are not, but primarily they're paid for by American taxpayers, and so you should utilize them. Um, one last thing before we actually look at the Library of Congress, I, I just, as I mentioned, um, 
the Metropolitan State University of Denver has a grant as one of the three regional centers in the country. And um, so if you're in the Western United States, um, warrior people to contact, um, Kyle and I are both involved in that. If you're in the Midwest in that lighter or in the lighter gray color that uh, they're based out of Illinois State University. And uh, you can get that their information on the at that link there, as well as the Eastern region, which is coordinated out of Waynesburg University there in that darker gray color. And basically the regional program, um, there's hundreds of um, TPS program or TPS um, partners throughout the country. Um, and if you want to become one of those partners and do some of this work with using these resources from the Library of Congress in your education and educational settings, um, we have grants up to $25,000 available to, to help with those um, things. Um, we won't go into too much about all the things that we've done, but pretty much it covers the gambit um, with different groups, and different subject areas. So if you're interested in, in this conference or this presentation kind of makes you excited about doing more, Get a hold of us. Um, there's, like I said, there's there's funding available to make this happen, um, and like I said, we have some different regional partners who can kind of walk you through that process and make it happen for you. And so, don't forget twenty five thousand dollars for educational stuff. Um, now we're going to actually hop over to the um, Library of Congress page live. And so, if you were to go to loc.gov, which you can see up there in the uh, URL bar, this is where you land. And so, libraryofcongress.gov is a website. But really what it is, is it's a collection of all the departments and institutions that are housed in the Library of Congress. And like I said, it can be a little daunting because we have things like the Copyright Office. We have the congress.gov is there. We have the Folk Life Center. We have the Center for um, the Blind um, Group. I can't remember their official name, but they help people who are vision impaired. Um, as well as all the exhibits and things they do in person and the catalogs and, and on and on and on, all the things that are housed there, the law library and so on. So anyway, so this is a landing page for all of that stuff. And so I'm just gonna give you like a, a quick rundown of what the, the main page they call the page you land on when you first land here. So you'll see at the top, there's a place where you can search, which we're gonna, we're gonna spend a little bit of time there because that's kind of like your best friend here, helps you sort through those millions of things. Next down is a slider. And what all that means is it's like a slideshow that runs through some of the top things that are happening. Like I mentioned, congress.gov, obviously it's Black History Month. You highlight concerts here, they have the uh, Brian Blendon, so all these things to slide. And those are just some popular things, not everything they have, just a couple of popular things. Directly below that, you'll see there's a little bar and these are some of the most commonly visited areas on the um, Library of Congress. So you'll see um, the big ones we're gonna touch on today are teachers because we're working with educators and so a lot of their education resources are there. And we're also gonna be looking a little bit in, the, in some of the research um, resources, but we'll hit those in a second. So we're gonna pause. Next down on the page is what they call their trending module. So this is where they take, this is where they're getting the most requests for information from. So you see the Gershwin Prize is going to Lionel Richie, which is kind of fun. He'll have a concert on PBS um, later this year. Some things about um, their mute magazines and some webcasts they're doing and some podcasts and some blogs. And so if you really wanna know what's new at the Library of Congress, you can look at this or we have another section session here that you can watch that's specifically on what's new so you can get our take on, on the new stuff at the Library of Congress. But anyways, this is on the main page where you can find that. The next section is something called your library. And primarily this is information if you're looking at doing visiting or doing research in, in DC at the Library of Congress. And so this talks about how their physical um, collections are put together, how to plan your visit. Um, the only thing that might be of use for, or might be of interest to you is the Ask a Librarian. And we'll talk about that a little bit later too. Basically, if you can't figure something out, they have librarians online who are ready to help. And we'll talk about how to get into that specifically. The last section down here, um, they always like to highlight their resources. And so they have what they call their free to use and reuse sets. And so every month about they'll um, freshen these up because it's the Winter Olympics right now, they have athletes featured right now. And so you can see some of the, some of the beautiful photographs and art and other sorts of things that are available to you, um, use and reuse. And the kind of the neat thing about these is that um, much of the collections of the Library of Congress are what they call our, um, are copyright free. So they've um, passed out a copyright. And so these are all things that belong to the American people. And you can take these and you can use them how you see fit. You can remix them, you can use them in your classroom, you can, whatever you want. They're kind of, they belong to all of us. Um, so that's kind of one of the things about copyright law. It does take a while to get there, but eventually once they're um, out of that copyright, you're kind of free to use them as you want and turn them into what you want. 
Um, the only other thing at the very bottom of the page so I just want to mention is that there's social media down there. And so if you like to stay engaged via social media, this is your opportunity to connect with their different departments via social media. You can see they pretty much cover all the major platforms there. Um, and so that's the main page. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to go sliding back up to, to the teacher's page. As, as I mentioned, right below that slider is a teacher's page. And I'm going to turn you over to Kyle, who's going to give you kind of um, his expert walkthrough of kind of the best places to kind of get started on the teacher's page. You go to lsc.gov and um, click on that teacher's button. It's also lsc.gov uh, slash teachers. Um, if you ever forget where it's at on the on the main page. Um, the teachers page is really nice because this is everything that's curated and uh, created by teachers for teachers. Um, usually, or uh, really just anything teacher related, um, how to use this in the classroom, what to, um, good resources are, are good for elementary kids, what, you know, just about anything you can think of um, having to do with education um, and primary sources is, this is kind of where it starts. Um, so you'll notice on this main part, there's ask uh, or about this program. This kind of just gives you an overview um, of uh, the teacher's program. Um, these getting started with primary sources are really helpful here. You'll see the, you know, this is the getting started kind of just some foundational um, information about uh, what primary sources are and how to use them in the classroom. Um, the primary source analysis tool, this is the uh, foundational um, analysis tool that we've always used. Uh, observe reflect question um, uh, to analyze primary sources. Um, and then here's a guide to citing primary sources as well that can be really helpful for students um, who are creating research, um, <coughs> excuse me, projects out of this. And then um, one other part I wanna show you after these featured videos, which are just helpful to, um, if you're ever looking for that uh, mixed media type of uh, presentation for uh, primary source, for teaching with primary sources, um, the blog is also very nice on here, so you can click on more posts from the Teaching with Library of Congress blog, and you'll get all of their blog um, posts that they, you know, they constantly publish maybe once or twice or three times a week, something around there, um, all about just different teaching ideas to use um, in the classroom, you know, whether that's athletics or data sets or, you know, civil war or whatever it is, those are, are really helpful. Um, back up here at the top, you can see getting started with primary sources, another link here. Um, this is another place uh, where you can find all of that um, information about what primary sources are, the analysis tool, um, finding primary sources, so that idea of how to find um, primary sources, some, some tips on doing that. Um, and then, you know, other things like distance learning, primary sources, uh, the standards, how the primary sources fit into that, um, and student discovery sets. These are super cool for uh, younger kids, especially because they're um, super visual and you can get them on your iPad um, or iPhone or whatever, and they're, they're free iBooks with, with primary sources. Um, back up here at the top, you'll see the classroom materials. Um, these are really nice because these are, again, curated by teachers for teachers. Um, they have primary source sets, uh, full-on lesson plans, um, and then presentations. And, and the, so these primary source sets to start are really nice because they um, are focused around a particular topic or person um, that's typically taught in school. Um, so I'm just going to click on this American or Abraham Lincoln one um, and show you that what they try to do with these sets is get primary sources around that person in a bunch of different media formats. Um, so you'll, you know, you'll see a drawing and some text and a map. Um, you know, just a bunch of different, uh, an image, uh, a political cartoon, um, you know, this is Lincoln, but for the, for the, uh, more contemporary, uh, primary sources, they're also going to try to get audio and video in there as well. Um, and those, th these, uh, primary source sets are nice too, because they have the teacher's guide at the bottom that, um, gives you some ideas, um, about using it in the classroom, but also, um, some background information uh, so you can get acclimated on exactly what it is um, that you're teaching if you're using these. Um, so I'm going to go back and to the classroom materials. Um, the lesson plans are nice. These are uh, teacher created, you know. Um, the main thing about these is to just kind of dive into them, uh, do a good, you know, search um, 
a shotgun of kind of what sources they're using, what strategies they're using, and steal whatever you think is is uh, most helpful for your own classroom. Uh, these presentations are super helpful too. I really like these. I'm um, gonna keep adding to these um, uh, as as they go along. Um, this U.S. history primary source timeline I think is one of the most um, beneficial uh, ones for students, especially. Um, they put all of these primary source timelines that used to be in a older um, LOC format. Um, they put them all in the new LOC.gov format so that you can search these uh, US history resources um, in, a, in a chronological way. So I'll just click on one and show you. Um, what they've kind of done is try to make a, uh, a good timeline out of primary sources um, from the best you know, the greatest and the best of, of whatever they have. So this is a really, you know, good place to go, especially if you're doing that US history um, piece of it. So as I scroll back here to uh, classroom materials, the last thing I wanna point out is these this uh, professional development section. And here you'll see um, anything that they're, they've uh, done or are going to do in terms of professional development for educators. Um, when the pandemic started, they started doing these online office hours um, and I think they're going to continue to keep doing these. Um, but these are cool because these are like um, hour, hour and a half long presentations on a particular topic like comics, a particular um, collection that they have, um, or even, you know, a, a, a teaching resource too, they, or a teaching strategy, excuse me, too, that they um, are, want to show off. So here you can just go into them, watch the recordings download the session materials um, and view them on your own time. They're pretty helpful to um, just dive deeper into the, the library's collections. Um, I think with that, we might go to the guides next, right, Keith? That sounds good. And you may know a couple of things that we're doing here. So um, we're kind of starting with some curated materials first. As you notice, first we went to the teacher's page, which is curated specifically for educators. Um, the next area I wanna show you is something that they call their research guides. And they've been around at the Library of Congress for a while, but they've recently given it a serious um, update. Um, and it's kind of buried within the research area. And we find the easiest way to, to find it is to go to guides.loc.gov, which you can see at the top there. Fairly easy to remember. Um, you can also just search for guides um, at the Library of Congress site and you should be able to find it pretty quickly. Um, so basically what this is, is um, when the researchers and the curators and the archivists at the library um, get questions from people and they do a deep dive into the collections of the library, they have all these resources. And so what they've always done is they'll create what they call resource guides. And so they've amassed, there's well over a thousand of these in there now. So pretty much, most of your research topics, there's going to be something if you can dig through here a little bit. Um, and so those are all been put in this interface where they're, they're collected underneath some of the, uh, the main subject areas that the Library of Congress has. So you can, um, right here, we're just looking at the subject list. So you can drill down by subject, um, which sometimes is helpful if you're particular, since it's Black History Month right now in February, you can drill down through African-American studies and you can see that there is a pretty exhaustive list of different topics um, and it goes on a ways. So that may not be the quickest way to get through that. So they have a couple other ways to get through this. Um, so I have it by research center and if you're familiar with the way that the library is um, structured, you can go by which reading room you're in. Um, that's probably not gonna be the easiest way unless you're really familiar with the Library of Congress to go through. Though some of these somewhat make sense. So if you're you know, if you're doing African research, you can go to the African Middle Eastern um, area, um, probably for most people's purposes, what you are gonna end up with is using the little search tool. Um, so Kyle, go ahead and search for something there. Let's see what he comes up with. I think I had like Black like History or something. Since it's Black History Month, that makes sense. And so you can see that you'll get, um, right now we have 677 pages that are connected to it. Um, so that might be a little daunting to get through. You can kind of browse through here and see that there's quite a few things. There might be some things of interest, but if you kind of look over to the right-hand side, 
they're starting to implement this in most places at the library as these filters such so you can filter things and I and probably a best place to I find for these is to filter either by subject or they also have like keywords or tags I guess they call them here. So here you can go like African American history might be a good one because we're looking. You can do it by subject and you can also go down to the tag one Kyle. The second one there. And then you can see um, a lot of these things are um, related to a set called the African American history online or resource guide. And I've used that one before for a lot of different things. So let's take a peek at that because I know it's a really strong one. So when you, these are the research guides. And so hopefully, you know, you can find one of these fairly quickly using that interface, you know, whether it be look, looking through the subjects or doing the search and using those filters to get to where you want to go. But say, okay, so you got to where you want to go. So you want to do a little bit of information about Black History Month by looking at to, into the resources. So an important thing to know is these are focused on the resources at the Library of Congress, but the they've also included tons of um, helpful things for researching outside the Library of Congress as well as including like resources outside the library that are vetted by them that they know are quality, um, as well as usually in some cases, some searching tips. So, so he's showing you some of the external resources. So you can see there's digital collections from other institutions and then general topic resources. So they have links out to other resources. So you can imagine if one of your students is trying to do a like an overview, like a, an overview of the research or the materials that are available, this is like a perfect place to start. Um, if you hop back to the introduction, so just so we can kind of walk through this, what this looks like. So they'll always start with an introduction. This is just to basically say, here's what this set is about. Um, in some cases, it's pretty easy to figure it out, but they'll um, give you a little bit of a rundown so you can see they talk a little bit about that. Um, next, they'll give you the Library of Congress online resources. And so here they're going to show you all the collections at the library. So the Library of Congress collects things and what they call collections, which is how they're donated to the library. Often it's the a collection could be somebody's papers or an organization's papers. So it's all those random things that they got donated. We always think of it like grandma's trunk. She's got old dresses, she's got diaries, she's got old jewelry. So it could be a bunch of different things. Um, so these are all the different um, collections. And then they'll go through each of the different categories, as you see here, like today in history. They'll also give you all the related research guides. So this is a research guide that contains, looks like over a hundred other research guides. So as you can see, it's kind of like a one-stop shop for your research. What else I got in here? Newspapers, um, exhibits, digital collections. I think we kind of covered all that. So basically this is everything they're gonna have online for at the Library of Congress. And as you can see, that's a lot of information, but at least it kind of has it in one place. And it's pretty easy to understand and they annotated it. So it's pretty easy to get through. They have selected print material. So if you're looking at getting some, some books or some secondary sources in some cases, this is great. They'll have them kind of tabbed up here. So it's have books available online. So if you don't even have to go to a library for those. Those will have online digital copies, um, books for general readers. And so that's just general audience, secondary sources usually. And then they have books for young readers. Um, you know, you're probably aware that, you know, with your younger students having some of these um, picture books are really a nice way to um, pair with primary sources and picture books to really um, introduce them to some of these topics. So, I mean, perfect stuff for Black History Month in your, in your classroom. Grab one of these um, picture books, go back to the resources, see if you can find a few, few things that match up or go to the teacher's page. There's some sets that would line up that with that really nicely. And we are in business. Um, so online search strategies, I mentioned this earlier. So um, the, the archivists or the whoever put this together is gonna, they're gonna talk about their process of how they found this stuff. So they're gonna go through, tell you about keyword searches, um, what to browse for. This one actually includes a book about how to search collections about uh, African-American studies. And so talk about how an inside guide. So they say, hey, there is a book that talks it because it can be kind of difficult. Um, especially when you get back into like um, pre-reconstruction and slavery and stuff, the, the terminology is is really kind of locked in that time period. And so this really is, so these sorts of resources are incredibly handy um, if you've done research in these areas. So just having that curator who shared this information is just kind of amazing. Um, and the last one they have on that list of things is external websites. And so as we know, the wild west of the, of the internet is that it's hard to determine the credibility of websites. And um, so these are, these are sites that the, whoever put it together, 
these are sites that they trusted and have vetted. Can't guarantee that they're going to be 100% bias free or without issues, but you can at least know that somebody who is experienced and is a subject matter expert has referred you to the you or your students to these resources. So it's a really good place to say here is a good place for you to go. Um, and I think if you click on it, it'll tell you it'll take you to the catalog so you can figure out. Um, oh, that one is actually digital. Cool. Oh, that was digital. So anyways, it'll, it'll help you kind of track down where to find them. Either, either they're available online or, um, or other places. So it's at least a nice starting point, you know, some good resources that have been vetted. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, where this information is coming from. That's a whole other topic that we can get into, but this at least kind of gives kind of a safer playground to, to do your research in. Um, the only thing I mentioned here is that we mentioned before we have Ask a Librarian there, which is in the lower left corner. That's going to be all over in these guides because the, those Ask the Librarian people are the ones who put these guides together. Um, and so you can always click on them. Sometimes those research guides, the actual, the actual curator who wrote them will have their link there so you can email them directly. So if you had a question, you can do that. Another thing to know is that these research guides like, apparently come a lot of times from people who, who write to the Library of Congress, Ask a Librarian service. And then um, if they don't have a research guide on it, or they'll, they'll add to research guides based on the questions they're getting. So never be afraid to go in here and ask, because as you might be able to tell from looking at the research guides, they get very engaged and excited about working with their collections and sharing that information out. So having that conversation with them, we've used them all the time. We know some of those people who do that work, and it is their passion in their life to find things that you, that you may not be able to find. So when we get stuck, this is where we go and and uh, and get help from them. And honestly, it's usually they'll get back to you within a day or two. Um, I think they're generally they try to get back within a week at the latest if it's something major. Um, but it's a super great place. So if you ever get stuck, this is where you go. Ask a librarian, ask.loc.gov. And like I said, they have click links to this everywhere. And sometimes it feels like no way are you going to get any help or you're going to get a, a robot or a stock web page. No, it actually goes to real people. They have live chat, they send emails. So right there and waiting for you. Um, I think that covers the guides. Like I said, there's there's a thousand there, so we're not going to be able to cover all of them. And sometimes you got to do a little work to filter through them. But I'd say the teacher's page is probably the first place I would go um, when I'm looking for stuff. And then the, the guides is the second place I go. Again, because they're curated by the experts at the library. So you have that advantage of of people who know the collections have put that together for you. So no need to go, you know, getting lost in the big collection when you very likely somebody's already done some of that work for you. So those are just some tips from us. Um, the next thing is, is I think when those fail or if you kind of want to go to the wild west and dive in looking through those millions of things on your own, then you go back to the search bar at the top of the page and Kyle is going to walk you through, through that. Yeah, sure. I, uh, the searching the library's uh, collections isn't as daunting and, and scary as, as a lot of folks make it out to be. Um, they have a so I'm back at the main page here, and um, at the top you'll see this search bar. So here you can type in anything you want. Um, on the left side you'll see a drop down that you can uh, only search in that uh, category media category. Um, so if I'm looking only for audio recordings. Um, I can search that or only films, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just search everything to show you. Um, what I would suggest when when starting out searching, especially, is to just try one word, um, a, a one word search. Um, you know, whether that's a place or um, an event or a person's name, um, but that way you can get a big overview of what the the topic is that you're looking uh, for. So I'm just going to search Colorado. Um, <clears throat> And, and you can see on the left here, it shows you've got 200,000 some items, you know, just way too much um, with the term Colorado in it. Um, so this left side, your filters um, are going to be your most uh, powerful weapon here when searching the library's website. Um, so here you can, you can further filter down um, by the uh, type of media. So we can go photo print, web page, map, 3D object, et cetera. Um, online format, I wouldn't worry about too much um, unless you're looking for a particular thing like a PDF or something um, and you know that it's there. 
Uh, the date is super helpful because you can go down to a specific year. So I can filter this. I can keep on clicking and go all the way down to 1901 or something um, to get the exact uh, primary source that I'm looking for. The location um, is helpful sometimes, though I will say the location um, is either the location it was taken or the location it was um, uh, published at. So be wary of what it says here. Um, I'll show you the bibliographic page here in a sec. Um, on why that is important. Um, we see here the uh, part of collections. This was also the, uh, the same type of uh, uh, area of the Library of Congress, section of the Library of Congress that um, Keith was talking about with the guides. So if you know those um, contributors, if you know who uh, gave it to, so you know for like Carol Highsmith, for example, she's a really famous um, photographer, photographer from the library. Um, so if you know it's something that she took, then you can click on that and go there. Um, subject that it uh, falls in, language that the uh, primary source is in. Um, and then this bottom part is the most important part, uh, access condition. If you're not at the library um, actually doing research in the Jefferson building, always click on this available online. Um, it doesn't limit your search uh, too much. Um, but it will make it sure that you only get things that are available to download. Um, they're out of copyright. I, I got this uh, 404 uh, technical difficulties page, um, and I, I get this often with the library's uh, databases, mainly just because they have, you know, tera, terabytes upon terabytes of data um, stocked up. So what I usually do if I get this page is I'll just do, I'll just do a quick refresh. Um, and usually it'll come up with whatever I was looking for before, you know, even if it's just a one, one page, if I just click refresh, um, sometimes it takes a couple times, but um, it, it, it'll usually load it eventually. Um, so um, I narrowed it down to uh, available online. So this is only things that I can access that are out of copyright. Um, and what I want to show you here is um, a map, uh, since we haven't gone over maps, um, very much lately. Um, so here I got Colorado and I got maps. So I'm only getting maps that are, that have to do with Colorado. Um, remember though, too, that it's anything, any map that has the word Colorado in it that was archived, uh, using that metadata. So you might get, you know, here's Colorado County, um, which is, looks like it's in Texas. So be wary of what you're clicking on and make sure that you're clicking on what you want to actually click on. Um, this bird's eye view of Colorado Springs, you know, they have these uh, uh, bird's eye view of a lot of different towns and cities um, across the nation. And I wanted to click on it just to show you uh, kind of how um, detailed these are. Here's no, another one of those um, pages that aren't loading. Maybe I'll try to click on a different one. Well, usually you'll get a, um, you know, a page like this and you're able to click on it, click on that middle image so that you can zoom in. Um, and the coolest thing about the maps when you can zoom in is you can see, you know, names of uh, streets, names of, um, you know, little businesses, um, all sorts of different things pop up in those uh, historical maps um, that are really cool to surf around in and have students surf around in. Yeah, we'll leave it to doing a live demo that we have issues with it. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually, there we go. There we go. <laughs> it, it eventually will come around. Yeah, so this is what they call the bibliographic page. Um, you saw I clicked on the middle there. Um, that just gives me a bigger viewer um, so that I can like search it, zoom in, um, super high definition, you know, get whatever I want out of it. Um, they, they just implemented this new tool that used to only be on Chronic Link America. And um, I think they're putting it on all uh, resources. Um, right now it's on all maps that I, that I found out, um, but it allows you to kind of click or clip out any little section of a high definition um, resource so that you only get that. So I just put a little box around that area. I click clip um, and I'll get a uh, permanent URL for that one little uh, section of the primary source that I want to use. Um, and then here you can also have it you know, it'll link to the full image and you can download it. Um, it's having trouble loading it from the um, Library of Congress's website. But what's nice is you can give this URL to your students and then 
um, they can just use that if you're not trying to reveal the whole um, primary source, for example. Um, just scrolling further down here on the bibliographic page to get you an idea of how this works. Um, you'll see a download button on the bottom of the primary source. Um, the, the typical rule of thumb is the higher uh, file size, the better quality. Um, if you're printing off on, you know, eight and a half by 11, it's probably um, good enough to get a JPEG. But if you're, you know, you're going to get a big uh, map print off, a big poster print off, it's good to get these JP 2000s um, so that you can get, you know, the, the highest quality as you can. Um, scrolling down here, you'll see the about this item. Um, they're going to give you, the archivists are going to give you as much information as they can, as they know about uh, the primary source. So here you see a title contributed by uh, when it was created or published, um, the subject headings, um, some notes, if they have some notes, which are kind of nice um, from the archive, archivist, um, and then some other archival information. The one important part for your students is this cite this item. Um, so you can, you know, if you're wanting Chicago style or APA or whatever you want, um, you can have students just copy and paste this, this uh, uh, citation right there. Um, on the right side here too, these are all links to um, like subjects or like collections um, about that same topic. So right now we're in maps of Colorado. Um, so we also have some other, you know, general maps. It's in the geography and maps division. Um, it also is in a Southern Ute Indian Reservation um, collection. So it, anyway, it gives you some good on-roads for further research um, if you find a primary source that you really, really like. And I think that's about it for the searching. Keith, what, what else should we go over? I think we pretty much covered, and, and really our intent wasn't to cover everything, but we really just wanted to give you some, some good starting points and just to reiterate, we did a couple of curated places. That again was the teachers page, which you can access right here off of, right below the slider at teachers. Um, the, the research guides, which are at guides.loc.gov. Um, and then we showed you how to search. And um, that is right at the top. And again, start with uh, as broad a keywords as you can, some big subjects, because um, you can use those filters once you do a search to, to narrow things down. Um, the other thing you didn't really show, Kyle, but um, it also has predictive searching. Maybe we just show them real quick. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of a handy thing to know. So when you type everything, all the all the searches that come up with things that have Colorado in them will have will pop up there. So sometimes you just need to you can use that like really simple keyword and then use that to to find um, connections. So you see yeah, this. This could be helpful for those students that are like, oh, God, I got to do it. A or like project on the Civil War, and then they can type in Civil War here and go to all oh, the like maps and <laughs> photographs. You and you get fifty project ideas right there. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> but it's you know it's a good way to get um, some of those trending, I guess, keywords uh, that other folks use often on the library's website. And you're pretty much guaranteed to find something if if you go that route. Not that you're going to come up blank usually with the library, but at least you'll know that you've hit a, a usually a subject heading. So there's going to be some pretty solid materials. Um, much more we can talk about, and I would suggest um, get a hold of us if you have questions. Again, that Ask a Librarian service, which um, is everywhere on the page. Again, if you scroll down just a little bit, yeah, it's on in the corner there. So usually you're never a couple of eyeball shifts away from seeing the Ask a Librarian button. If all else fails, go there. They'll they'll get you pointed in the right direction. Of course, you can always reach out to us. Um, our information is in the uh, conference information, or just find us in the directory, or we'll also link it to this video if you're watching it um, that way. Um, we're help, happy to help. Um, again, this is all at loc.gov, and that's how we get started. And um, we'll see you at the other sessions at TLD 22.